Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. Today we're doing a motherboard review. It's the Asus Prime X370 Pro motherboard. And let's jump right into it then with the key features. So of course it supports all AM4 Ryzen CPUs and overclocking like all X370s and B350s do. Now memory wise it takes uh, dual channel DDR4 memory up to 64 gigs of it and it can go up to 3200 megahertz. that's really good. It's coming with a PCIe 3.0 times 16 slot with steel reinforcement and because it's an X370 it supports SLI and Crossfire although it does go down to uh, by 8 that's still plenty of bandwidth though. Audio wise it's coming with the Realtek S1220A audio codec which is uh, yeah really good and it has audio shielding, premium capacitors and a dedicated PCB layers so that also helps. Now let's talk about the layout and work from top to bottom. So at the top there like usual we have the 8 pin CPU power connector and the CPU fan headers. Then we see the 10 phase power VRM design, uh, that's really nice, big heat sinks there too, that's always good to see. Good quality chokes and capacitors, that will help you when it comes to overclocking. Over on the right hand side we see the 24 pin motherboard connector like normal and a front panel USB 3.1 header, that's uh, quite good to see. Now in the middle we see two more 4 pin uh, fan headers, an RGB lighting header, and another connector which I'm not actually sure what that is. So if you guys know what it is, let me know in the comment section down below. Now under that we have something I do know what it is. It's the M.2 slot. This is above the GPU which a lot of people like because it means that it won't get as hot as ones that are under the GPU. Now this is PCIe 3.0 times 4 so that's going to be uh, plenty of bandwidth there for your ultra fast M.2 SSDs. Now it's also coming with two more PCIe, uh, or two times total PCIe 3.0 times 16 slots, one PCIe 2.0 times 16 slot, and three PCIe 2.0 times one slots. So there's uh, plenty there for you to use. Now it's coming with eight SATA 6 connectors, so that's really good. It allows you to run uh, RAID 0, 1, and 10. And as far as the uh, bottom there, you see the front panel headers, or like normal, some more fan headers, a front USB 3.0 header, and all the other usual stuff you would normally see. Now let's go around to the back then and talk about the I.O. So it's going with six USB 3.0 ports, including one Type-C port, that's plenty for most people, but it's also coming with two USB 3.1 ports. Those are the lighter colored ones you see there. It's coming with a display port and an HDMI port. Uh, most people won't use them, but they're there anyways. It's coming with a Intel i211 AT LAN controller. That's nice. And all your standard audio ports. Now let's talk about the BIOS then. So we'll talk about updating it first. So you either do this uh, through a USB or over the internet. I always do it through USB. It's just usually safer. Um, updating it itself is very straightforward. You know, anybody could do it, so that's really easy. The BIOS itself is uh, pretty good. I would say my only gripe with it is that it, it might be a little bit complicated for um, inexperienced users. So that would be the only thing. There's a lot of stuff there. Maybe some people might say there's too much. Um, and they've made it too complicated. But yeah, in general, if you're a, an enthusiast who knows their way around a BIOS, then you should be fine, but uh, newer users might run into a little bit of trouble. However, overall, it was very good. When my Ryzen 7 1700 overclocked to 4 GHz, no worries at 1.4 volts, and memory managed 3000 without any worries either. Uh, so very good there in terms of the BIOS and overclocking. Now it brings us to the conclusion, and we have to bring price into the equation. So it's coming in at 259 New Zealand dollars over at Playtech. Now that's only $20 more than the MSI B350 Tomahawk motherboard I reviewed recently. So what are the main benefits of this over, say, the Tomahawk? It's going to have more SATA ports, more PCIe functionality, uh, so that's going to be really good for people wanting to run two GPUs, and definitely has uh, better audio, that's for sure. So overall, it's a, it's a solid motherboard. It's a solid entry-level X370. And I would say this would appeal to someone who's going to be using two graphics cards, especially two uh, NVIDIA graphics cards, as you can use Crossfire over on the B350 or so, um, but don't want to fork out heaps of money for a really high-end X370. So it's a good uh, sort of entry-level one there. As I said, the BIOS might be a little bit complicated for some people, 
but most people should be able to get by with it just fine. And yeah, this is overall a uh, very solid motherboard. I didn't see anything really on it that would detract me from it. However, I want to ask what you guys think. What do you think of this motherboard? Have you used it? Uh, what do you make of it, of everything I've said here today? Let me know in the comment section down below. Now, I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already, and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.